what is up guys welcome back to the channel as always i uh, keep you up to date on all the latest uh, pro wrestling news and all the latest coverage uh, tonight we got the wwe hell in a cell 2021 pay-per-view so we gotta recap and talk all about it and give you guys uh, my review on it and what a pay-per-view it was huh monday night Raw literally coming in here and giving us all of the worst matches for the night it almost feel like monday night Raw was the one that ruined this pay-per-view and then of course what an ending the most uh, devastating move in pro wrestling the roll up is how we get to see the main event end the main event which by the way was inside the hell in a cell so could you imagine could you imagine how the undertaker and mick foley feel right now watching a hell in a cell match and in a roll up anyways we're gonna get into that and everything that happens so you guys already you know hit those notifications if you want to continue being up to date on all the latest on wrestling news and if for even more content consider subscribing for both of our channel first off i think it's only fair we talk about something that i kind of feel like we talk about a lot and that is that the gimmick pay-per-view they need to go this weekend we literally ended up having three hell in a cell matches simply because it was hell in a cell pay-per-view weekend you know how bad that sounds for pro wrestling that sounds pretty bad at this point uh, wwe doesn't even build towards a hell in a cell you know the structure that is supposed to pretty much and a certain feud and it's supposed to be for the most uh, vicious type of storylines that we are getting but no we just get it simply because of the gimmick pay-per-view same goes with the TLC matches extreme rules matches elimination chamber matches and so on and i'm not saying to get rid of those type of matches you can still give it to us but actually build towards it and you can still give it to us in other pay-per-views you could give us two elimination chambers at survivor series or SummerSlam or any other pay-per-view just bring back some of the classics you know bad blood uh, judgment day vengeance some of which they're using for nxc right now but honestly bring it to the main roster so i'm okay with still getting yearly hell in a cell matches but uh, this gimmick pay-per-view just continue to force it and that is annoying it kind of proved the point this weekend let's be honest bailey versus bianca Belair didn't need to happen inside the hell in a cell don't get me wrong though it was a good match it was actually the best match of the pay-per-view they definitely forced a drew mcintyre and bobby lashley in there and then ray versus roman reigns obviously it was a great match but ray mysterio and roman reigns had one confrontation the week before and you're telling me that all of a sudden that qualifies for them to give us a hell in a cell so that part is just a little bit annoying at least to me i apologize if you guys think differently just do understand that i still want those matches i just don't want wwe to force it to us just because it's the pay-per-view with all of that being said uh, let's go ahead and talk about hell in a cell on the kickoff we ended up having the wwe women's tag team champions natalia defeating mandy rose in one-on-one -on -one competition then the show started off with what was uh, the match of the night in my opinion that being uh, the smackdown women's uh, championship hell in a cell matchup bianca belair versus bailey bailey was great on the hell in a cell last year against sasha so i was expecting this one to be really good heel bailey is just so good when it comes to matches like this because she get the crowd going or i guess the audience watching nowadays because the fans are not back just yet what i like about this match is that they actually gave us some unique spots there was a lot of spots where bailey was trying to tie bianca belair by her hair and she was being a smart heel trying to take advantage of that and then the irony about all of this is that at the end bianca ended up using her own hair to defeat bailey so it kind of backfired on bailey going after the hair so some unique spots right there with the hair and also bailey bringing back her double candlestick on the outside which again she did last year on the hell in a cell against sasha she did went through it though so it's probably a good idea for bailey to stop setting things up because every time she does she's the one going through it next up we got another smackdown match as cesaro taking on seth rollins decent matchup this alongside the kevin owens match was probably the best match that we got that didn't involve a hell in a cell for the end of this one seth rollins pretty much ended up tying up the score def defeating cesaro but just stealing that victory at the end 
And you know how Seth Rollins ended up doing that? With the most devastating move in pro wrestling. A small package. It's always that. A small package, a roll up. You call it whatever you want. It is literally the most devastating maneuver nowadays. Which makes it even more disappointing that WWE pretty much did the same thing on the main event. We had Alexa Bliss versus Shayna Baszler one-on-one -on -one competition. But Shayna Baszler did have Nia Jax and Reginald on the outside. This was a good match. I mean, it felt like it was a simple Monday Night Raw matchup. I feel like I was a bit disappointed from it just because my expectations were kind of high. This is the last pay-per-view in the Thunderdome. This is WWE last pay-per-view during the pandemic without the fans being back. So I was expecting them to go crazy on the magic side of things. And that didn't really happen. No crazy edits, but we did have Alexa Bliss possessing Nia Jax and making her slap Reggie which was actually hilarious Reginald got slapped twice tonight once by Shayna Baszler and the other by Nia Jax so he was having one of those nights in the end Alexa Bliss picked up the victory with a twisted sister Abigail Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens although it was uh, one of the most slowest match of the night I do always appreciate good Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn matchup this one was heavy on the tactical offense good match psychology here with Sami Zayn heavily focused on the arm of Kevin Owens so he just kept at it and in the end he picked up the victory because of it. A still good back and forth between both of them. Kevin Owens as sell of the arm injury was phenomenal and I'm still kind of wondering if he was injured from that but I guess we'll find out once reports come out. Rhea Ripley versus Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair actually won this match but by disqualification and honestly the biggest highlight of this match came at the end. Rhea Ripley intentionally got her herself disqualify by removing the cover of the announce table and hitting Charlotte Flair with it. She kind of went on to even tease a heel turn too by screaming at the referee to indicate that she is still the champion. That kind of feels like something that only a heel would do. To be fair though, it's not like Rhea Ripley has been a full-on babyface. She's kind of like in between, at least on the main roster, because clearly Vince McMahon is still trying to figure her out. But tonight, she does give us uh, those big hints that she could be going full heel. Maybe in the next couple of months. I don't think it's going to happen right away, but maybe it will be something that they build towards it. It was also funny to hear Charlotte Flair tell Rhea Ripley at the end that she's finally learning after getting intentionally disqualified. And then for the main event, we got Bobby Lashley with MVP taking on Drew McIntyre in a hell in a cell. We actually got some pretty good spots all throughout this match. A lot of steel steps and steel chair. It's almost like that is the only thing that they ended up using tonight. At one point, we also ended up having Drew McIntyre stocked in the corner and in between a candlestick. So that was a nice spot as Bobby Lashley beats him up. MVP ended up saving a Bobby Lashley's a championship run, pulling a referee out after another one was taken out. Drew McIntyre then went on to attack MVP. MVP ended up selling a claymore kick all the way to the end. That is when he came into play. After some back and forth between Bobby and Drew, Drew is getting ready for that claymore kick. He's on the corner. When he is about to deliver, MVP is up and he holds him by the leg, stopping the claymore kick that was gonna win the matchup. As Drew is distracted with MVP from behind comes Bobby Lashley and goes for the roll up now this was great involvement by MVP obviously Bobby Lashley and MVP are also heel so winning like this is not a problem except this is a hell in a cell match that we're talking about so it almost feel like in the last 10 minutes they forgot about that I guess at least it didn't end in a referee stoppage right like Seth Rollins versus The Fiend as a matter of fact I'm not gonna even try to defend it because this is probably just as bad because because not only they gave us that finish, but because of that finish, I feel like it ruined the rest of the match, which was actually decent. Anyways, guys, that is going to wrap it up for me. My voice is almost gone since we also ended up doing a watch along. And with that being said, I want to say thank you to those of you guys that ended up joining me on our live streams. I hope you guys enjoy that simulation and also our watch along. We will certainly keep it coming. So make sure to hit that bell notification on. Anyways, guys, if you enjoy or found it informative, hit an elbow drop on the like of this video and i'll catch you on the next one so stay savage